Another mm -hmm. one was the idea of nature is like a clock, which implied that nature as a system was designed. And this was one that you found repeatedly in the works of Robert Boyle. He said that, that uh, tis, uh, nature is like a rare clock where all things are so skillfully contrived that the engine being once set moving, all things proceed according to the artificer's design. So you have the idea that nature has a regularity to it, as uh, clockworks does, and that regularity is a product of an aboriginal design of a great mind, namely the mind of God. Yeah, Paley and Boyle both used an illustration in different centuries about if you were walking out in the woods and you found a watch, you wouldn't think that, you know, it just grew up with the grass or it fell off of a tree or something. That would show you the fact is somebody that was intelligent had made that watch and somebody had dropped it there. It didn't just, you know, it, it, it had design in it absolutely, already. Absolutely, absolutely. And you find that the early founders of modern science not only presupposed that nature was the product of a divine mind, but when they went and looked at nature, they saw evidence of that design that they talked about in their scientific works. One great example of that occurs in Newton's famous book, The Principia. At the end of The Principia, which is the book where he makes his case for universal gravitation, uh, he has a, a theological epilogue called the general scolium. And there he argues that though the law of gravity can explain why the planets stay in their stable orbits today, the law alone does not explain how the planets arrive their delicately balanced positions in relation to each other at the very beginning of the solar system. And so there he develops a very elegant, uh, what's called an initial condition fine-tuning argument. And if you don't mind, I'd r just read Please that do. passage. It's, it's, it's uh, What I love majestic. about this is that the people that were arguing, and you went back and you read the original to find out who was telling the truth, okay? And you put up the Latin script in your book, and I thought, give me a break, that, you know, you went back and read it in Latin? No, you got the English translation and you read it, so I was glad to hear that. Well, but yeah, let me, let me share this one passage. It's fascinating. Uh, Newton making a design argument right, right in the, uh, the Principia, which is arguably one of the two or three greatest works of physics ever written. Right. And he says, though these bodies, referring to the planetary bodies, may indeed continue in their orbits by the mere laws of gravity, they could by no means have first derived the regular position of the orbits themselves from those laws. Thus, this most beautiful system of sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being, capital B. So right in the Principia, which is arguably one of the two or three great works of physics ever written, Newton made a design argument for the existence of God on the basis of the intricately finely tuned planetary system that sustains our life on Earth. Uh, so you have this tradition of design arguments being made right in the, in the scientific works of the great founders of modern science.